wanted to do this first video talking about our experience getting our first travel nurse contract. and welcome back to the Ariel Views. I'm Ariel. And I'm Oscar. And if you don't already know, we are travel nurses. <laughs> we have just gotten to our first assignment in the very cold and snowy state of Virginia. We are coming from West Texas, so this is all brand new to us. I will have a video coming out about our journey here and our first couple days here in Virginia. So far, we're loving it. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's different. It's cold and there's snow everywhere. We wanted to do this first video talking about our experience getting our first travel nurse contract. I was keeping in mind all the questions we had as beginner travel nurses, because I'm sure there is a bunch of you out there that have been interested or have thought yeah. about doing this sort of thing. So we figured we'd do a video talking about the journey and the steps of us getting our first travel nurse contract. First, it feels like it's overwhelming. Like, yeah. What do I ask? What do I look for? It's a whole yeah. bunch of information. We kind of wanted to take you along our journey and talk about what we did and what we learned on the way. First of all, we wanted to talk about the process of getting a travel nurse contract. The first thing you want to do is you want to reach out to any sort of travel agency and get a recruiter. What is a recruiter? A recruiter is someone who will find jobs for you. They'll find hospitals and send you all this information like where this, these hospitals are at, how much they're paying, what kind of shifts you're looking for. Your recruiters will work specifically with you and the agency that they work with, and they have all the assignments that the hospital has open, and the hospitals are all over the country. So you reach out to your recruiter, and from there, they'll be giving you a whole list of assignments, and you kind of just pick and choose what you want to do, where you want to go, and you'll let your recruiter know. You'll have to create a whole profile on their agency website, and your recruiter is really great about telling you what they need. So it'll be like a resume, some skills checklists. The onboarding process can kind of be a little bit lengthy, but once you do your profile with that specific agency, you shouldn't have to do it again. And once that's ready, your recruiter will submit you to those assignments that you specified with them. And you'll just wait to hear back from them. Usually if the hospital is interested in you, they will reach out to your recruiter or they'll reach out to you within a few days. In short, find a recruiter, create your profile with their agency, have your recruiter submit you to all the assignments that you are interested in, and then you wait and hear back from them in a few days. Another important thing, don't be afraid to have multiple recruiters. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That way they all are working for you and then you just choose your best option. I think in the beginning we were kind of scared to put ourselves out there with more recruiters, but good recruiters will encourage you to have multiple agencies and recruiters that you're working with. And you should because certain agencies might offer more, might offer different packages, um, and it also helps as you're starting out to really get a good idea of what's out there. We'll be doing another video later on about qualities of a good recruiter, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But ultimately, don't be afraid to have more than one. We had two starting two. out, probably as the months and the years go by we'll probably get another recruiter yeah. here and there just to keep our options open maybe having more than three might get a little overwhelming yeah you get a, a ton of offers every day yeah from you know you don't want to get confused and mixed yeah. up and we were fine with two yeah, so we maybe starting out at least have two yeah. <laughs> make sure you're being transparent with your recruiters make sure that you tell them Hey, just so you know, I do have another recruiter. I've already submitted to these. You do not, and I repeat, do not want your recruiters to submit you for the same assignment. What happens is the hospital will just throw out both submissions. Your chances of getting that specific contract have decreased entirely. So make sure you're transparent with your recruiters. Make sure you let them know. Just be honest and open with them about who you're working with and what you've already submitted for. Going into a little bit more detail about actually submitting for your assignments. Make sure you're very open with your recruiters about what your preferences are. What are you looking for? What are you trying to gain out of becoming a travel nurse? Is it the pay? Is it experience? experience? A little combination of both. Make sure you're very open with them because that'll make it easier for them to give you the assignments that you actually want. Like, we only wanna stay in the South, we only wanna get paid 3,000 a week, then make sure your recruiter knows that so they're only sending you those. That'll cut out all these extra information you don't need. The lighting's a little bit crazy right now. Yeah. It'll just get overwhelming in your head, so make sure you're very open with your recruiters about what you want. 
You might even have to ask yourself that. What is it that we want? And we had several conversations going into it, making sure that we were on the same page. Kind of in line with figuring out what your preferences are, make sure you also figure out a budget as well. We had to sit down several times to kind of figure out what is the bare minimum that we can get paid per week in order to reach our goals. Make sure you are already planning that in your head because you don't want to just accept a contract and then once you start you realize, man, I'm not getting paid as much as I yeah, wanted to or man, I'm not in a place I really wanted to and I didn't need to sacrifice experience for pay because I didn't need to get paid that much. Make sure you understand your own personal budget and we can also do a separate video on budget as well. One of our really good friends gave us a little tool so if he lets us yeah. use it maybe we can share it in very, one of our next videos. Neat tool. It helps you figure out your net pay versus your gross pay. You're totally in control of where you go, how much you're getting paid, mm -hmm. what hours you work. That's something that you don't really experience in and a regular and, and it just have so, power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can have the control yeah. in your career, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that's important, I, I feel like everybody should keep an open mind. Everybody wants to go like to Hawaii, mm -hmm. California, all these beautiful places, <laughs> Florida. You gotta keep an open mind because there's lots of beautiful places. Like we would have never thought to come to this town in Virginia. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful place. I've never heard of this place. It's like, there's lots of beautiful places off the beaten path, you know? Yeah. Keep your options open, be ready to explore. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, in the beginning, of course, my, like, my dream was to go to Florida. I was like, let's go to Florida. It's a beautiful time of year. It's February, like, it's not gonna be too humid. But the more we looked into it, and we did a lot of research, which we'll talk about next, realized, you know, it, it might not be the place for us this time, which is okay, because we still have every other contract to think about. We came across Virginia, and it's not that I'd never wanted to come, I just never thought about it. We figured out, you know, this is kind of more our style. And that's important too, like what is your style? Do you like a big city? Do you like level one trauma? So keep an open mind, do your research. There are a ton of resources nowadays available to anybody that wants to do this sort of thing. Specifically on Facebook, there's a lot of Facebook groups. My absolute favorite are Travel Nursing Newbies and the Travel Nurse Network, I think it's, or it's the, gypsy. the Gypsy. I'll leave it, yeah. I'll, I'll put the name of it, the exact name of it below because there's a couple for the Gypsy Nurse. There's even a website for the Gypsy Nurse too. When you get all these lists of assignments that you can submit for from your recruiter, you know, you're kind of going into it blind. Like you're like, well, I don't know anything about this town in Virginia, or I don't know anything about this town in Florida. Let me use the search tool in those groups on Facebook and see what other people are saying. We were able to dodge a couple, dodge bullets. A couple bullets, and I'm not gonna say where, but just hearing about the nurse patient ratios, how they treat travelers, and you know, of course, like there's gonna be people that have negative things to say all the time that doesn't necessarily make it true. But when you're seeing comment after comment after comment or post after post after post, saying the same thing, yeah. recent posts. And on multiple groups. On Facebook. multiple groups, yeah. you know, it kind of makes you realize like maybe I shouldn't. And there might be people that disagree with us on that sense because they might say like, well, you never know it until you try it, which is absolutely true. But I, I'm a person that likes to do research with everything, you know, when we're planning trips, when we're planning anything. So that tool for me is really handy. So make sure you join at least one of those groups. There's a ton. I mean, we're also in the ER travel nurses yeah, group. It also helps to speak to nurses who have been doing oh, the yeah. travel nursing thing. They're an excellent resource. It really helps to find community. Also, in addition to that, a lot of recruiters are in this, these groups as well. So these recruiters will post packages, they'll post job postings. And it's great for you if you don't have a recruiter yet, you don't know where to start, you can always find a recruiter in there. If you're just like us, that you're kind of just curious to see like what jobs are posting, you can go into those groups as well and you can kind of look at what they're posting. And if you do already have a recruiter, you can always just screenshot it, send it to your recruiter and say, hey, do you have anything like this? Or you can just contact that specific recruiter that posted the post to begin with. One thing I really want to stress to any newbies out there that are looking into doing this, a lot of these hospitals, especially lately given the pandemic and the crisis that's going on, 
they do prefer nurses that do have travel experience. We were told by a couple of recruiters and a couple of friends too, mm -hmm. it might take a couple weeks to get your first contract. But don't freak out. You will get one. Everybody that I've talked to says that this is completely normal. It'll be easier for your second contract and beyond. It took us a couple weeks. Give it time. Try not to quit your job right when you decide to be a travel nurse. Don't quit your job until you've secured something else because you don't want to be scrambling for income. A really good piece of advice that I'm glad that we listened to was make sure you have a decent amount of money and savings before you start. A lot of things with travel nursing require you to pay up front. You have to travel a long way. You might have to pay out, out of pocket for that. Depending on your agency, they might reimburse you. They might give you a bonus. So make sure you're clear on that with them. But you do want to have a little bit of a safety net before you go into it just because things happen. Unfortunately, even if you get a contract, you might get canceled. And that is just the negative part of being a travel nurse. You get canceled at any time. So make sure you have a good safety cushion. I think it's like at least three months of bills saved. Yeah. That's like a good starting point just in case because you never know. I kind of mentioned this earlier. Because of COVID, a lot of these hospitals are offering auto offers where they're basically accepting you without ever really speaking to you. It's very common lately because everybody's so desperate for staff. Just keep in mind, you might feel a little bit better actually speaking to a manager of a hospital. I know I did. Yeah, I, I did. Because I, I asked all my important questions like what are the patient to nurse ratios? Yes. How does scheduling work? PPEs, do you have enough PPE? And can I use my huge own? Huge question. Yeah. You know, can I use my own PPE? You're getting the answer straight from the source, I guess you could yeah. say. They call it an interview. They yeah. do ask you, where have you worked? Tell us about yourself. So it's a little bit like an interview on their end. But as much as they're interviewing you, you're interviewing them. Very informal. You need to ask them all the questions questions that you have, specifically nurse to patient ratio, PPE, scheduling. He and I are traveling together. We want to be on the same schedule. What's the point of coming all the way to Virginia and we're going to be working opposite days? We'd never see each other. That was a really important factor for us and also a really huge reason why we chose where we're at right now because they pretty much guaranteed we'd be on the same schedule. Yeah. We had a couple auto offers where we didn't speak to anybody and it just felt off. It just felt off. But it's really important to have that recruiter that will advocate for you and also advocate for yourself. Make sure you stand up for yourself and say, you know what, I'd really like to speak to a manager. Holy Karen. <laughs> I'd like to speak to a manager. Once you've spoken to the manager, if all goes well, you should be receiving an offer from them within 24 to 48 hours. Once you do get that official offer from your recruiter, from the hospital. You have a certain amount of time where you have to give them a yes or no. I think the typical standard is about 24 to 48 oh, yeah. hours. If you're kind of stuck between a couple contracts, let your recruiter know so they can kind of push it back as much as they can. We had a couple that we were still pending while we got an offer for this one. So we were kind of like, oh, let's hold off. And once we didn't hear anything from the other hospital, that's when we were like, now let's go ahead and take it because we didn't want to lose the opportunity either. Okay. So just be very, very open with your recruiters about this. Again, transparency and honesty is key. Um, just so they know what's going on and they know how to help you. So when I went to edit this video, I noticed that the last two to five minutes of it just mysteriously disappeared. I'm gonna go ahead and conclude that video now. I hope that it helped you. I hope it gave those of you who are interested in travel nursing a little bit of a peek into what getting your first contract is like. We will be doing more videos in the next few weeks, months, years maybe, I don't know. Make sure you comment down below if you want to see something specific and of course don't forget to like the video if it helped you out and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye!